right you guys we are attempting the 48 hour reading challenge today i am so nervous because i have been wanting to try out this reading challenge for months now but i just have never done it i've done 24 hour reading challenges on my channel you guys seem to really love those types of videos so i decided to finally in 2023 attempt the 48 hour reading challenge it is currently 9 58 on a saturday and because i have no life and i have nothing going on today i am starting this challenge today in literally two minutes at 10 o'clock one thing i want to know is that i will be stopping the clock when i am not reading like i'm not planning to pull an all-nighter just because i physically can't pull all-nighters i will end up falling asleep anyways when i go to sleep i'll stop the clock or whenever i'm not reading i'll stop the clock but for the most part i'm going to attempt to read for as many hours straight as i can just because i think that's the whole point of these challenges to just spend the whole day reading i normally start all these videos by reading a romance but i want to switch things up today and start off this reading challenge by reading a thriller this is the made by nita prose it actually won best thriller i think last year for the goodreads awards i'm really excited to read this i mean it must be good if it won best thriller of 2022 we shall find out this book follows molly gray who struggles to have like normal social interactions she doesn't really fit in she works as a hotel maid she loves being a maid and one day while she's working her shift she discovers the dead body of a very wealthy guest and because of her unusual demeanor the police automatically assume that she's a suspect and that she has something to do with the murder of this very prominent and wealthy guest so molly has to prove her innocence with the help of a few friends it's a murder mystery reminds me a lot of clue i'm really excited to start this i've heard really good things again it won best thriller last year on goodreads i'm hoping it lives up to its hype but we're going to start this now and see how it goes it is officially 10 o'clock and we're off <laughs> I just realized I don't have any of my like rings on. I feel so naked. I need to put them on. But I just read the first 70 pages of this book. Mr. Black's body has been found. So this is the guest that has been murdered at the hotel. His body was found pretty early on in the book. But the first couple chapters have mainly focused on Molly and understanding why she's different from everyone else. Which it seems to me that she might be on the spectrum. It's been hinted. It hasn't really been like directly mentioned but the author is writing her character as if she was on the spectrum honestly so far the book has been pretty slow it hasn't really been the most exciting book to read so far and i hate when thrillers are slow i mean i just got to chapter six so hopefully the book does pick up There's a few side characters that are taking advantage of Molly's naiveness and her willingness to trust people, which is pretty sad that people would take advantage of such an innocent soul. But they're definitely using her naiveness to their advantage and getting her to do favors that they know no one else would do. And I feel like all these favors that she's doing are going to get her in a lot of trouble. more than halfway done with the book and i'm kind of confused as to how this one best thriller how it is so incredibly slow i'm confused right now how it won best thriller on goodreads everyone in the book has been underestimating molly and she's about to prove them wrong which is going to be amazing <music> I just finished reading The Maid. It took me about four hours to read The Maid. It was so short, which thank God it was short because you guys, it was slow. <laughs> I don't know how this book won best thriller or best mystery. I forget what the genre was that it won. I thought this book was so incredibly slow. It just failed to deliver for me. It focused so much on the fact that Molly loved being a maid, which I get it. The title of the book is The Maid. But the author made her seem like she was obsessed with cleaning 
cleaning and I think she kind of was obsessed with cleaning to an extent and I literally felt like every five minutes the author would mention how much Molly loved cleaning and I was like getting so frustrated I was like okay I get it she loves cleaning it's awesome good for her you don't have to keep mentioning the fact that she loves cleaning focus way more on the fact that Molly loved cleaning than on the murder mystery and then the ending with the whole big twist reveal just felt so unnecessary and like it was just thrown in there as an afterthought that I couldn't take it seriously and I did not really enjoy the big twist. Every time I start filming, my cat starts meowing for some reason. Why? Why do you do that? You want me to hold you while I talk? Again, not my favorite thriller. I would give it a two and a half out of five stars. And I'm kind of disappointed I chose to read this book first. That's what I get for not sticking to romance. So the next book that I read is definitely going to be romance. I'm actually not quite sure what book I want to read next. Oh wait, I lied. I do know which book I want to read next. And it's in my office, so let's go. The next book that I'll be reading today is By a Thread by Lucy score I have been wanting to start this book ever since I bought it last month and I have just been putting it off because look how thick this book is 548 pages I probably will be reading this for the rest of the afternoon because it's so damn long but I'm really excited it's a grumpy sunshine workplace romance it follows Dominic and Allie Dominic is obviously the grump of the story Allie is all sunshine Dominic apparently got Allie fired from her job in a pizza shop and because of that his mom hires her to work for them and all Dominic wants is to force Allie to quit but Allie actually needs a job so she has no interest in quitting it seems like she's the only one that is willing to argue with him and stand up to him I love a good grumpy sunshine books and I've heard so many great things about this book so hopefully it's a lot better than the maid because the maid was not that good and I'm going to start reading it now oh wow i actually didn't know that lucy's score has written so many books for some reason i thought by a thread was her second novel but she's written a ton of books to you for trusting me with your heart and your book budget that's so sweet <laughs> Dominic and Allie just met and it was actually so funny. Their interaction was hilarious. Allie is giving me so much life. Like I understand her frustration so much because I also worked at a food place. My first job was actually at a sandwich shop. Sometimes I would get the rudest customers for no reason. They just wanted to be rude. So I completely understand Allie and I wish I could have reacted like she did <laughs> Some customers are just so damn rude that all you want to do is teach them a lesson, but obviously you can't because then you'll lose your job. But I completely understand where Allie's coming from and I just love her. Her personality is giving me so much life right now. I love Allie and Dominic's relationship. Even though they are always a bickering, you can already tell how much they like each other. Their dialogue, along with all the side characters' dialogue, is making me so happy. It's just like I'm loving all the characters in this book so far. It's kind of annoying how Dominic is asking, or not even asking, he's telling Allie to quit her job just so they can be together and he can get her out of his system. Why should she be the one to quit her job? job instead of him so obviously Allie is upset over him constantly bringing that up and suggesting it and I don't blame her I would be upset too I'd be like you quit why do I have to be without a job when you have the ability to quit as well like you could quit your job and then we can be together why does it have to be me so I completely understand why Allie is upset towards Dominic for that reason <laughs> kind of funny how Dominic thinks everyone at work hates him because of what went down with his father when in reality everyone well the females just don't know how to act towards him because they think he's so hot so they get flustered and nervous whenever he enters a room but he doesn't see it that way he sees it as them being uncomfortable so I just think it's so funny that 
while he's worried about the staff not liking him they actually do they like him a little bit too much to the point where they just can't even hold eye contact with him hopefully he realizes soon that they're not afraid of him they're just obsessed with him <laughs> I just got to chapter 42 halfway done with the book and i honestly feel like i've read an entire book already just because of how thick this book is i feel like it's two books in one i still have over 270 pages left to read it's actually going pretty fast i don't know if it's because i'm actually enjoying it or if it's simply a fast-paced book i've read shorter books that have felt an eternity to finish i feel like i'm flying through this book or maybe i'm just enjoying it that much i don't feel like dnf in it i'm not annoyed with the characters or anything so that's always a plus <laughs> Drunk Dominic is actually pretty darn adorable. I love how like he reverts back to being a little kid. Also, I love that his chocolate lab is named Brownie. It's just so fitting. I feel like if you're going to name your chocolate lab anything, it might as well be Brownie. His dog Brownie is definitely one of my favorite characters in this book. <laughs> Dominic's father is the absolute worst. Not only is he a predator, but he's such a shitty father to Dominic. He's always been in a competition with his own son, which I never understand why some parents feel the need to compete with their kids. Like, you should uplift your kids, not make everything in their life a competition to try to prove something about yourself. Like, it's so stupid and bizarre to me. I just hope that he ends up in prison by the end of this book. If he does it, I'm going to be so upset. Dominic just fucked up royally i was rooting for him and he completely blew things up i'm kind of upset that he acted way that he did because i would expect that behavior from someone in like their 20s or early 30s not really someone in their 40s literally he's acting like someone in their early 20s who are still trying to figure out their lives and trying to navigate relationships like i understand his past hasn't been the easiest but for him to act the way he has been acting is just ridiculous i don't know how ali is supposed to forgive him because i don't know if i would <laughs> if i'm being honest and i finished the book yay another book done the ending of this book you guys was so freaking cute so adorable so sweet literally perfection the ending alone is definitely 10 out of 10 for me but i do have some tiny tiny issues with the book that of course we have to talk about don't get me wrong i really enjoyed reading this book i loved dominic's and ali's relationship i love their characters i love their banter with one another i especially adored ali's character i love how she was super independent and even though she had a lot going on in her life she never allowed her circumstances to make her bitter and she was always willing to help someone out to be a good friend my only complaint with these two characters is that they are in their mid 40s i think ali's 39 dominic is 45 if i remember correctly and as i was reading the book i kind of felt like i was reading about characters that were in their 20s 20s still trying to figure out how to navigate relationships how to express their feelings and i understand why dominic was the way he was like he definitely had a lot of trauma and a lot of things that he had to deal with from his childhood even from his adult life that were caused by his family so i know why he was the way that he was but at the end of the day i feel like if you're going to have older characters you might as well make them act their age i honestly didn't get the vibe that these characters were in their early 40s it felt like they were in their early 20s does that make sense i don't know let me know if you read this book and if you feel the same way also the whole back and forth of i want you but i can't have you but no one else can have you either got old pretty quick quick for me i think it wouldn't have bothered me had it been just like a couple chapters of them going back and forth of trying to figure out if they could have a relationship or if they had to stay away from one another maybe if it didn't take half the book for them to get together it wouldn't have bothered me so much that's another thing i don't think this book had to be over 500 pages i know i mentioned the length of this book multiple times and it's probably annoying but again i 
don't think this book had to be this long in certain parts of the book i felt like the plot was definitely being dragged just a bit but with all that being said i still very much enjoyed this book and i 100 percent would recommend it to everyone especially if you are into rom-coms and really enjoy the grumpy sunshine trope then definitely check out by a thread i loved how i tackled harassment and consent especially consent in the workplace and how to properly navigate relationships in the workplace so no one feels like they're being taken advantage of or there's any favoritism being played i think i give this book a four out of five stars i'm super happy that this turned out to be a good book because if i had gotten two bad books in a row during this 48 hour reading challenge i would have been so upset and it honestly had me smiling and laughing and i love when books are actually funny like you ever read a book that's supposed to be a romantic comedy and it's not funny at all this one was actually pretty funny it is getting pretty late by a thread took me literally the whole afternoon over seven hours to finish it is currently 10 o'clock and i think i want to start another book before i call it a night but before i do that i think i'm going to shower get into my cozy comfy pajamas so i can read more comfortably like in bed here is my tbr card these are the books that i've read so far this month and these are the books that i have yet to read i kind of want to switch up the genre that i read next i don't think i want to read the kiss curse i was thinking of starting a court of silver flames by sarah j mass or unravel me this is the second book in the shatter me series and i think this is the fifth book in the a court of thorns and roses series which i loved i wish you guys could tell me what to read right now which one should i read court of silver flames or unravel me i don't know i'm gonna take a shower and think about it because i really don't know which one i want to start first i let you guys know what i decide I decided to start A Court of Silver Flames. Like I said, this is the fifth book, I think, in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. I've been really hesitant on starting this book because it follows Nesta as the main character. I have not been a fan of hers at all. I don't know if I'm going to enjoy this book, but hopefully I do. But yeah, I'm going to read a couple chapters before I call it a night. I didn't realize how much I miss Dara and Reese until they made an appearance in this book and i'm so happy that they are part of this book i mean it's a part of the court of thorns and roses series so it makes sense that they make an appearance here but reading about them just makes me so happy i just got to chapter eight of the book like i said earlier i honestly did not think that i was going to enjoy this book one bit because of nesta's character but i'm actually getting a lot more insight into who she is as a person and i feel bad for her because she's definitely suffering from ptsd Behavior. her behavior is definitely making a lot of sense now i'm going to call it a night here because i am quite tired and i feel like this is a good can i stop yawning this is a good stopping point i'll stop the timer now and resume reading in the morning so i'll see you guys tomorrow good night <laughs> I'm so tired. I spent a few hours in bed this morning just reading the book. I need to get rid of this garland. It's almost February. Like, what am I doing with my life? Every time I start to warm up to Nessa, she does something that pisses me off. And I'm just like, oh my god. Why are you such a bitch towards Feyre? Like, I don't understand what her deal is with her sister. I know it stems from something deeper. Probably has nothing to do with Feyre and everything to do with just Nesta. Every time she interacts with Feyre and it's such a bitch, I'm just like, what are you doing, girl? Like, can you be nice? Would it kill you to be kind to your baby sister? Just got to part two of the book. Part one has mainly been just trying to understand Nesta's trauma and her PTSD. Also, she started to train a lot. Along with that, the rest of the court is trying to prevent another war from happening. Everyone in the court is evaluating a possible threat from one of the villains from the last book. I forgot that these books are divided between parts. I'm enjoying it so far. I forgot how much I enjoyed this series until I started reading this book. I'm kind of upset that this is the last one for a while. I don't know when Sarah J Maas plans to come out with another book or the Akatar series, but hopefully soon because I'm going to be really sad when I finish this book. <laughs> 
just got to part three i've literally been reading all day on and off like i've been taking breaks today is sunday so there is football on it's wild card weekend so i've been watching the games while reading but nessa had so much progress with her attitude and her behavior in part two until the end when she lashed out at Feyre and revealed a big i don't want to say secret but i guess it was a secret that everyone was trying to protect Feyre from discovering she just was a total bitch towards her sister once again and i'm just so confused as to why she hates her sister so freaking much like i don't even think she hates her sister the only way she knows how to protect herself is by lashing out so when she lashes out it's a way to protect herself like she wants to hurt other people before people hurt her which is obviously a trauma response but i don't know i just wish she would sit down and talk to her sister and like hash out whatever issues they have from the past because it's getting really sad at this point that she's always attacking her sister and also she hates reese like why does she hate reese so much i don't get it all he does is protect his core protect his family yet she hates him maybe because he's the only one that doesn't want to cut her any slack i think if it was up to reese he would be so done with nesta and like send her far far away but since she's Feyre's sister he's trying to make the sacrifice of giving her the benefit of the doubt i don't know but yeah gonna keep on reading <laughs> I underestimated two things when I started this challenge. The first one being that I didn't realize how long it was going to take me to get through a court of silver flames. It's taken me a very long time to get through this book. Not because it's boring or anything, like I've actually really enjoyed it, but it's taken me a long time because it's a thick fantasy book. There's just a lot going on. So I find myself having to reread certain parts more than once. And I've also been getting distracted very easy, but I did finish it this morning so there's that that's great happy about that i'm going to share my thoughts quickly on this book and then i'll share the second thing that i underestimated with you guys right off the bat let me just tell you guys that i give this book a four out of five stars absolutely loved it it's probably one of my favorite books in the entire a court of thorns and roses series i'm like obsessed with this series the books just keep getting better and better i'm genuinely sad that this is the last book that is currently out of this series and i need another book asap i loved nasta and cassian i think that's how you pronounce his name like i loved cassian from the moment he was introduced in the first couple books like he's always had my heart i just I love how he was always super caring towards Farah and reese and even nesta in the earlier book he's kind of gone through very similar things as nesta so he's the one person who can completely understand where she's coming from and why she's the way that she is is nesta for sure redeemed herself which i was worried that she wasn't going to she has so much character development that by the end of the book i genuinely was so proud of her i know this is not a real book it's fiction it's fantasy like this isn't based on real life but i was just proud of nesta for how far she came and apologizing to the people that she needed to apologize literally by the end of the book she found her way home don't get me wrong i still very much prefer reese and Feyre's love story but this one was just so good it came very close to being one of my favorite books in the entire series loved all the characters i just want to know miss sarah j mass when are we getting in lanes and as love story like i need their love story <laughs> it better be the next book in the series to come out i'm just obsessed with them and they barely interacted with one another in this book but i feel like they have so much chemistry that i'm dying to read their love story if you couldn't tell from my review i highly recommend for you guys to check out this book i don't necessarily think you need to read the other books in the series i mean i think it will help so you get the full picture but i feel like this is definitely a good standalone if you don't want to read the entire series so now let's talk about the second thing that i underestimated i underestimated this 48 hour challenge you guys i thought since i've done the 24 hour reading challenge on my channel a couple times that i would be able to do this challenge quite easily but i just didn't realize how much time it was going to take obviously i know it's 48 hours but since i haven't been pulling all-nighters and i've actually been stopping the clock i've been taking up so 
much of my time and at this point like i literally cannot read anymore especially after reading this book like i loved it but i just can't imagine starting a new book right away i think i'm actually going to stop this reading challenge right here i think i read for like 32 hours so far i'm like quitting this challenge early i'm sorry i just can't continue on reading i can't imagine picking up another book right now i also have some stuff that i need to get done so i can't continue on just reading for the most part i really did enjoy the books that i read during this challenge the main not so much but by a thread and a quarter silver flames definitely were really good books and i highly recommend for you guys to check them out that is pretty much it for today's challenge i'm so sorry that i didn't make it to the whole 48 hours i came pretty close and i read more than 24 hours so there's that let me know in the comments below if you ever attempted this challenge did you read for 48 hours straight did you give up halfway like i'm doing right now i would love to know and if you enjoyed watching this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe i would love to have you a part of my channel i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys